राम मंदिर का भव्य निर्माण होता है ये लोग उसका भी विरोध करते हैं ये लोग तो सनातन धर्म को समाप्त करने की धमकी दे रहे हैं जो नाइन्टी परसेंट आबादी है देश की उनकी हिंदुस्तान के सिस्टम में संस्थाओं में कॉर्पोरेट्स में सचमुच में कितनी भागीदारी है सबको साथ लेकर सबका विश्वास जीतकर सबका विकास करना ही तो भाजपा का लक्ष्य है 30 लाख सरकार के पास रोजगार है जो बीजेपी के लोग आपको देते नहीं हम हैं जो कह रहे हैं भ्रष्टाचार हटाओ और वो कहते हैं भ्रष्टाचारी बचाओ हेलो एंड वेलकम वेन टू द पॉलिटिकल रंबल इंडिया इज सेट टू vote in the 2024 general elections in the next week as the campaign slowly picks up steam here is a big question that we are looking at today what really are the big issues of the battle for 2024 are the issues centered around religion caste personal attacks on each other is ram mandir and caste census the issue or is it jobs and prices what about corruption what about the promise of acche din Today we'll do a deep dive into the findings of a nationwide CSDS survey and that's going to be my focus on the political rumble. Joining me now Sanjay Kumar, co-director Lokniti CSDS. He has anchored this survey. Rajat Sethi, political analyst who's been associated in the past with BJP leaders, Adil Singh Boparai, Congress's spokesperson and Sanju Verma, the BJP's national spokesperson. Good to see all of you on the political rumble. Uh, I'm going to raise the first big question on the rumble. What are the big issues of 2024 elections? What are the top issues of 2024 elections? And this is what the CSDS nationwide survey says: unemployment, 27 percent; price rise, 23 percent; development, 13 percent. Corruption 8%, Ram Mandir 8%, 8% Ram Mandir, Hindutva just 2%, India's global image 2%, reservations 2%, and 27% of unemployment, 23% of price rise, 50% are saying that the major concerns they have are linked to unemployment and price rise. First, to you, Sanjay Kumar, if you can tell us how big a sample size and when was this survey done, sir? uh the sample size is 10000 spread across 18 states and we went to almost 120 130 parliamentary constituencies uh, but the more than the sample size it is important to tell the viewer that the sample is nationally representative if we talk about rural urban voter men women and various other communities the survey was conducted between 1st of april and the 8th of or 8th or 9th of april so this is the first week of april when the survey was conducted among 10000 nationally representative sample of voters across the country okay so the first big findings unemployment 27 and price rise 23 add them together that comes to a whopping 50% are saying these are the top issues rozgar and mahangai not ram mandir which was just 8% or hindutva which is just 2% quite a interesting finding economy is clearly top of the agenda are you surprised with these numbers rajat sethi that we've just flashed on the screen well uh, see ultimately uh, be it any election economy and economy related issues especially for a national election does account for those level of uh, metrics that you are showing so i mean as the adage goes uh, it's the economy is stupid um, the economy is it good is it not good that is something that uh, the electorate will have to take a call but i think this is 
how a healthy, uh, you know, a democratic exercise should look like. Uh, these are uh, the bread and butter issues of a common citizen. And if they are, uh, you know, trying to vet uh, the Congress led India Alliance, as well as the BJP led uh, NDA Alliance on these metrics, it is good for uh, the nation. And I think BJP has its own set of answers to these economy related questions. And Congress also has a plan of action, which they have shared through the manifesto. So now it is up to the voters to decide that who can deliver better, more promising numbers on job, more promising numbers on controlling price, et cetera. So okay, I am very looking at this data. Oh, you're saying it's a positive sign that the voters are putting unemployment price rise above Hindutva and uh, Ram Mandir, uh, presumably, but Adil Singh Boparai, you know, when the early surveys were done in the 1950s and the same question was asked, they said unemployment then as well. So it's not as if unemployment is something that has happened only post 2014 when Narendra Modi took over. Generally, surveys put price rise and unemployment as their top two issues. Your first response. Uh, Mr. Sajasai, I think uh, Mr. Sanjay Kumar's survey fairly captures the mood on the ground. I don't think there can be any quarrel on this. Even according to us, two primary issues which the country and the voters are grappling with are unemployment and price rise. Now, today, notwithstanding BJP's refusal to acknowledge this problem, unemployment is a ticking time bomb. This is a monumental problem. We're facing very wide income inequality. Today, the share of the youth in the unemployment numbers has almost doubled. Wages are stagnant. And the country, unfortunately, the BJP has no few, no vision to deal with this issue. Number two, price rise. Today, I have some baffling numbers, baffling statistics to share with you. And this is something which breaks the back of the common man. The percentage increase in the price of atta over the past 24 months is 65%. Of soya bean oil is 61%. Of lentils is 46%. Of onions is 95% of sugar is 112%, of egg is 38%. Now, please see it through the point of view of a middle class or a lower middle class family who have to sustain themselves on a salary of about 40 to 60,000 rupees. Unfortunately, BJP's propaganda doesn't factor this in. Number three, agrarian distress. Today, our agricultural GDP numbers are low. Farmers have been protesting for better remuneration. They've been seeking means for diversification. They've been seeking increased MSP. But you have a belligerent government which is determined to label them as anti-nationals, which is determined not to listen to their grievances just because it doesn't solve or it doesn't meet their political ends. So therefore, economy certainly will remain... Safe okay, safe. Adil, your In time... Addition to this, Ad Adil, Adil I, you know, you've made your first point. Let's give everyone equal time. We've got enough time. Sanju Verma, you're quick in to, to respond to what you've just heard. Should this trouble the BJP as the ruling party at the center? 27% say unemployment, 23% price rise. It's not about Mandir. It's about Mengai. It's about Rosgar. You know, Rajdeep... Uh, there is a famous saying, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. And there is an entire cabal out there which believes that chahe kuch bhi ho jaye, Narendra Modi tisri bar Pradhan Mantri nahi banenge. But to the Modi naysayers, I will give out data which completely nails the false narrative that has been peddled by Rahul Gandhi and an entire ecosystem uh, that is hoping against hope uh, to see him being launched uh, this time around successfully at that. Let me tell you this. You know, I will come to Mehengai, I will come to inflation, I will not shove things under the carpet. But first and foremost, let's talk about unemployment. And I don't wish to be heckled very humbly. The unemployment rate was 6.1% in FY18. It fell to 5.8% in 2019, 4.8% in 1920, 4.2% in 2021, 4.1% in 2021-22. Uh, and 3.1% in FY22-23. The 3.1% unemployment rate is a record low. This is not data peddled by Sanju Varma or Narendra Modi or some WhatsApp university graduate, uh, which is what many people uh, tend to believe. This is data given out by the NSSO. And the NSSO also says that the rural labor force participation rate is at its highest ever at 61%. And the uh, male 
labor force participation rate is also at its highest ever at 77% and the female labor force participation rate is also the highest ever at 37%. That is my second point. My third point, and this was mentioned by the uh, union finance minister uh, by way of a white paper where the details are out. So let me make it very clear to your audience. Between 2004 and 2014, under the Manmohan Singh slash Sonia Gandhi led kitchen cabinet, the inflation rate, and we are talking of average retail inflation rate, it was 8.6%. The average retail inflation rate under the Narendra Modi government in the last 10 years is 5.1%. And mind you, Rajvi, we've managed to do 5.1% despite two very big black swan events. One was the COVID pandemic, the worst pandemic in 102 years. The second black swan event was the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Do you know something, Rajdeep? That the highest retail inflation in the last 10 years has been 7.79% in April 2022. Whereas the highest retail inflation rate under the Congress was in November 2013, 14.8% despite no... Okay, so you... Ma'am, your time is also up. I, I gave both of you... E no, no, ma'am, equal time. Equal time. You've got... Both got two minutes each at the outset, and I will request you to keep your interjections uh, to those two minutes. But Sanjay Kumar, as the author, along with your team of this survey, when you look at these numbers, what does it suggest? Both the politicians are throwing other numbers at me to compare their track record on unemployment or their track record on job prices. But does this suggest that contrary to popular perception, the real concerns of people are still Mahangai and Berozgari. They are not Ram Mandir or indeed Hindutva. Uh, Rajdeep, you have used the word the real concerns of the people. And I have no hesitation to say that the real concern of the people on the ground is Mahangai and price rise. I'm not saying whether it is going to be the big issue in 2024 Lok Sabha elections or not, but yes, this is a real concern. It is very evident from the findings of the survey. You have already cited the numbers. I don't want to repeat that. And it's not only the pre-poll survey which we have done, done recently. Even before the pre-poll survey of 2024, we have been tracking this over a period of time in different state assembly election and we have figured out that this is a big issue, big concern among the common people of this country. Whether you talk about people living in the rural India, urban India, big cities or small towns, whether we talk about the middle class people or the poor people, this is a big concern. And the simple question which we asked in the survey was, do you think finding a job or employment opportunity is difficult now compared to the past? And a very large number of people have said, yes, it is, very, it is far more difficult now compared to the past an indication of how serious is the problem of unemployment. When right. you talk about price rise, a very large number of people say, we are worried about rising prices. It is affecting our kitchen. It is affecting our budget. So if I go by the numbers, which I believe that, you know, this is, this is coming right from the ground, I have no doubt that unemployment and price rise are the two big concerns of Indians at this moment. Okay, but you're, not, you're saying they're concerns. You're not sure whether they will become the central issue of the 2024 elections. Am I correct? Absolutely. I'm not sure whether this will become the central uh, agenda of voting, whether this will shape the voting pattern or not. But these are the two big concerns of the common Indians at this moment. Okay, that's important to make that distinction, which leads me to the question which uh, Sanjay Kumar just raised. Is getting a job easier or tougher now? And look at what the survey says. 62% are saying it has become more difficult to get a job. 62%, that's 6 in every 10 in a 10,000 person survey. Stayed the same is 18%. Easier is 12. We also asked a follow-up question. Who is responsible for these shrinking jobs? Union government, 21%. That's the central government. State government, 17%. And 57% said both. So it isn't as if the blame is only going to one government. There's the Modi government at the center and there are a number of opposition governments as well in the states. That in a sense, Rajat Sethi reflects maybe what many people believe that there is a sense of growing frustration, anti-incumbency. Some would say against whoever is in power. It could be your local MP. It could be your state government. It could be the center People are feeling that neither of them are resolving their real problems of jobs. 
Rajdi, uh, there are two, three parts of uh, of your question. The first part is, if you were to analyze issues, Modi itself is an issue. So when it's a 2024 national general election, uh, people will not vote for issues. They'll, they will, it'll be a referendum on Modi. They'll pick and choose whether they want Modi at the helm of affairs or not. And if that becomes all of these issues gets, get trumped and pushed aside, that is number one. Number two is all respect to Professor Saab. Some of these questions seem leading. And, you know, it's very, very tricky when you ask uh, somebody who's been in the labor force uh, for the past five years, you're asking them whether it was easy or not in the past five years, uh, five years uh, before as compared to now. I don't understand what kind of a mindset is that uh, is that sur uh, surveyee going to get into. How is the comparison? What benchmarks is that person trying to deploy uh, to analyze his own sort of uh, experience in, in job hunting? So this means for the four or five years, that's that person who has been interviewed did not end up getting a job. He was hunting a job in 2019 and found it relatively easy uh, looking for a job. Let, as let me ask that to Professor Kumar. Right? Well, Rajat, you raised an important point. Let, let, let's get clarity from uh, Sanjay Kumar. Sanjay Kumar, were these open-ended questions? Rajat Sethi is saying that these questions seem to be leading questions. Your response? Uh, Rajat may have believed that these are leading questions, but I think the way we designed the question, it was very simple. And we should not forget, this is a perception thing. We are not yes, uh, exactly just opposing so. it with the actual data, whether in 2019, how many people had job and in 2024, what proportion of Indian population had job. This is the perception. You ask someone on the street whether you think getting a job is easier now compared to the past. And I do get a sense, even if I had not done the survey, a very large number of people say getting a job is very difficult. Uh, every industry, the TV industry where at this moment we are uh, um, sitting and discussing this, Ask the, ask the cameraman, ask the people in this industry, and they will all say, job bachana mushkil hai, sir, no sir, you are a hai. Sir, I'm let's just citing data. one example. Let's go not on go the by, street, what, ask what, anyone. Let's not, let's not go by anecdotes, sir. You are a no, no, one, one minute, one, one minute, one minute. Rajat, one minute. What, what Professor Kumar is These saying... These are not anecdotes. It's, it's a this is not anecdotes. Yeah, but you're saying it's perception. So what you're saying is anecdotal. No, no, one that minute, one minute. No, no, one minute, one minute, Rajat. Professor Kumar, you're saying this is a perception survey. The perception people have that it is that it is difficult to get a job. Absolutely. Am I correct? Right? It doesn't necessarily translate into political preferences. Absolutely. Absolutely. It this doesn't, is a perception survey. Okay. It doesn't translate necessarily into your political preferences. As we saw in the mood of the nation, a number of 72% felt the job situation was serious or somewhat serious, but it didn't necessarily mean that their voting preferences had changed. So, Rajat Sethi, you get an answer there. This is perception. The perception no, is not, why? no, no, this has not created for, a feel good Rajdeep, perception. For that, for, Can I come in? Ra Rajdeep, Ra this is Rajdeep, why? Rajdeep, for that you have to wait for the more stories to come tomorrow and day after. Okay. Let, uh, Maybe, so, wait for so more stories to come based on the survey tomorrow and day after. Don't jump on the conclusion. Okay. Let, 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 but let, but let, let you should remember that this is a perception Raj, survey. In the survey we ask perception. Why? You know, this is why this is why I'm saying it's such a technical topic that you have a whole ministry, Ministry of Statistics and Planning, which actually does this. And they don't ask a voter that what were you thinking five years back? What typically is it's a moving survey. These uh, these surveys are done at regular intervals to understand like how easy it is to to sort of find a job or whatever it is. Bureau of Labor Statistics of the U.S. does a fine job looking at a lot of, uh, you know, frequent uh, indicators into this. This assessment, perception, perceptional assessment, all of these seem quite, quite uh, muddled uh, into each other. Uh, there is a political intent also in the backdrop. On top of it, you're trying to bring. So it's from a statistical, pure statistical standpoint, I don't see this as a pure, pure uh, survey that way, which okay. doesn't have any... Can, thing, I, can uh, I just stop you? No, no. While you say in that... my understanding, sir, all respect to you. No, no, I, I, I take your point that you believe because it is perceptional, you cannot make the leaps of this faith. This is not how surveys are done. Is sir, the saying. fact though is that it sends out the signal that there is no great feel-good factor. Am I correct, Professor Kumar? Purely there, as a perceptional survey, it doesn't show that people seem to be happy with the condition. If, I, if, if a, such a substantial number of people are saying it is difficult to get a job in their perception, there's no feel, there's no positive flavor that I get from this survey. Am I correct? Absolutely. On the issue of employ, on the issue of jobs, unemployment, and price rise, there is no feel-good factor about the current government. 
uh, at least this is coming out from the data and I, uh, I, ag I agree to this perception that on this limited aspect about job, price rise, unemployment, there is no feel good factor. Okay, so, so, Sanju, Varma, so Sanju Varma, you can throw all the numbers at me. This is a perceptional survey and this is showing also, I want to make it clear, 57% are saying both state and center are responsible for shrinking jobs. So there isn't that kind of positivity which you are trying to drum up by throwing numbers at me. On the ground, there is genuine concern. Rajdeep, uh, on a lighter note, just two days back, uh, the Indian stock market, uh, you know, overtook Hong Kong, uh, the Hang Seng, basically, the Hang Seng, to become the world's fourth largest uh, market by way of market capitalization. Uh, and uh, Stock market is not indices of crores of Indians, ma'am. The health of crores of Indians cannot be decided by Dalal Street. No, ma'am, it cannot be decided by Dalal Street. But go ahead. If you're done, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. No, you have to continue. Once you're done, I will speak. Because you seem to be very itchy. Please go ahead, ma'am. Please go ahead. No, no, I will wait very patiently. No, no, I asked you. No, no, I asked you. Do you believe that the Sensex is a benchmark for people's sense of well-being across a large country like India? Please answer. Listen to what I have to say, or are you going to you know, go uh, jump into the debate? Like please go ahead, ma'am. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Thank you. If you want to interrupt me, only keep quiet. You can continue the debate. Please the go beach. ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Now, repeat. The Indian stock market over the Hang Seng to become the world's fourth largest stock market in terms of market capitalization and the Bombay Stock Exchange today. Okay, Sanju. Yes, you heard that right. 400 back brought, and the data from the exchange says that a large part of this rally was not driven by rich people like Rajdeep Sardesai. The rally was driven by small retail investors whose wealth has multiplied for some 10 times, for some 20 times, for some 30 times. The index was at 25,000. And, you know, it has been hovering around 75,000 for the last couple of days. Be that as it may, we are not here to discuss about uh, the wealth multiplication of uh, retail investors. I will say something on the unemployment bit. What was the GDP, uh, you know, in 2015-16? I'm not even going to know you know, the Congress's year of 2013-14. Prior to demonetization, you know, in 2015-16, it was $2.1 trillion dollars. Today, it is $3.8 trillion, give or take a little bit, which is a phenomenal 81% GDP growth. The CBDT data put up by the income tax authorities, the average median income of taxpayers was 2.2 lakh per annum in 2011. Yes, you are right. 2.2 lakh rupees per annum today. The average median income of an average taxpayer as per CBDT, this is not Sanju Varma showing numbers of her hand, is 13.4 lakh per annum, which means between 2011 and 2024, there has been a 509%, yes, 509% jump in the average median income of the average Indian taxpayer, which is one of the biggest proofs that half mein paisa zada hai, purchasing power bar gai hai, now wait, 20 seconds. I've said this in the past, I'll say it again. Today is the world's second largest smartphone market. Low kehte hain jobs nahi hain. Today we are the world's fifth largest civil aviation market. Low kehte hain jobs nahi hain. Today, exports in a single year, 750 billion dollars. Low kehte hain jobs nahi hain. India is one of the largest markets. After China, their iPhones are sold big time with our annual export of iPhones at $10 billion plus. Low kehte hai jobs nahi hai. 23 lakh motorcycles are sold every month, not every year. Low kehte hai jobs nahi hai. 6 lakh scooters are sold every month. Low kehte hai jobs nahi hai. Multi selling side cars every minute. Low kehte hai jobs nahi hai. Your 20 seconds is up, uh, producer. Well, we, are, we are having a bit of a problem also with your audio, but you're, you've made your point effectively there. You're claiming that just look at growths in specific sectors. How can you say jobs nahi hai? Adil Singh Boparai, as we say, this is a perceptional survey. Perceptually, people are saying 
that they fear that they are not getting the kind of jobs they want. Maybe it's about quality jobs, not just jobs, but that's the perception. As I said, even an earlier mood of the nation, 72% said job situation serious or somewhat serious. Yet when asked who will you vote for, a number of them said Prime Minister Modi. So the disjunction between a concern over jobs, but that Mr. Modi and his government is perhaps best placed to provide people with those jobs. Your response? Mr. Sardisai, it is a pointless exercise to discuss with the BJP because the only survey which they will believe is the survey conducted or undertaken at their head office. And let me tell the BJP, empty speeches do not fill stomachs. This is as old as politics stands. Empty speeches do not fill stomachs. Now, this is a bitter reality which our friends in the BJP will not acknowledge. That 73% of India's wealth is owned by 1% of India. Mm -hmm. I again repeat, 73% of India's wealth is owned by 1% of India. Hence, the stock market index of parameters cannot be extrapolated to state that wealth India is flourishing. Point number one. Point number two, as per the International Labour Organization, mm -hmm. the share of the youth in the unemployment figures stands at 83%. I think this is baffling. Any government which is serious about converting the youth into youth demographic dividend should be concerned about it. But the BJP is completely dismissing this issue with the disdain which they're reflecting on this debate. Number three, and this is something which is common knowledge, Please acknowledge the fact that the prices of essential commodities has drastically increased. Let's take the case of petrol. Mm -hmm. Petrol is over 100 rupees. Take the case of lentils. Take the case of milk. Take the case of wheat. Take the case of rice. These are items which people buy on a daily basis. A, a, a farmer sitting in Bareilly or a farmer sitting in Alwar is not concerned about market capitalization of the Bombay Stock Exchange. He's not undertaking any comparative analysis between the BSC and the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. He has to see that how much money does he pay to the Kiryana shop. He says how much money does he have to pay for his tractor input. But he sees how much money please? does he have to pay no, to the finish. petrol pump. So therefore, the BJP is unable to acknowledge this. Mr. Sardesai, I say this with humility. For far too long, the BJP's propaganda machinery has pushed this issue to the background. But I'm so glad the silent voter is recognizing that the BJP has miserably failed. Ma'am, uh, uh, no, Adil, 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 one minute. Adil, one minute. Before I move on, this just, just, right just to repeat, no, no, just a minute, ma'am. To just repeat, Adil, as I said, even our earlier mood of the nation survey in January said 72% felt unemployment serious or somewhat serious. It did necessarily change voting preferences. Should that worry you or not? A quick response, Mr. Boparai. I can, I can answer this. Prasadi, today the please. voter is scared. Mm -hmm. the, today the corporate India is scared. No, no, and these they are, are surveys. Scared because why why the, should they be scared of telling the truth in a survey? Please understand. Please understand, this, the survey indicates to you the issues which are burning in this country. But you will be surprised. This is going to be BJP's second India shining moment. Take it from me. Okay. Because the voter will give a, a resounding Can answer I... to the BJP's high-handedness. Okay, you're saying Today, this is a second... electoral you're saying this... Okay, you're saying second. this is a second India shining moment. Let me therefore come to the third question, which was just alluded uh, to a little while ago. Who is responsible for price rise? Now, prices have increased, say, 71%, stayed the same, said 13% in the survey, decreased, said 13%. So, 71% said prices have increased. Who is responsible for price rise? Union government, 26%. State government, 12%. 56% said both. Now, these numbers are interesting in the way they are, they are positioned, but Rajat Sethi, what they do suggest... And I, we can go back to every survey which will always say, yaar, mehengai hai. Voters seemingly always will put inflation usually at the top. Now, unemployment has taken over. But should the government be worried? Here is Adil Singh Boparai on the show saying this could be a second India shining moment. So, uh, see, it's important to parse uh, which state are you talking about and like double click on this data mm -hmm. because as usual, the devil lies in the detail. If I were to talk about the southern states where I have been spending considerable time speaking to the, the voters out here, in Karnataka, in Telangana, in Tamil Nadu, what has happened is that this 1,000 rupees uh, cash transfer to women have been a burden on the purses of the state governments. 
what they have done is they have levied uh, extra duties on electricity. Therefore, the peak prices on a lot of electricity uh, uh, delivered to uh, common people have gone up. So that has uh, sort of uh, incurred uh, a sentiment that the prices of uh, power have gone up sharply. That is one. The other thing is petrol. Look at most of these uh, states, southern states, their prices per liter of petrol and diesel is way higher than what is there in North India. That too is also uh, has been promised by a lot of the state governments which went into elections recently uh, that they would bring down, but they do not have the the elbow room mm -hmm. to actually reduce the duties on petrol and petroleum products. This is the reason why even petrol is not that big an issue, say, in, in a state like uh, somewhere in North India, uh, uh, where there is a comparative sense that, yes, it's at 90 rupees there, and whereas uh, in some of the southern states, it's 100 and 105 rupees. So my point is, unemployed, uh, this price rise will always be an issue. It's a perennial issue. There will be no election. If you ask a voter in isolation, he will point out unemployment and price rise. It doesn't lead to any other sort of political, um, um, you Would know, it, Okay, so, so yours, okay, yeah, you may, uh, Sanjay Kumar, you want to respond to what you're hearing, that this is a perennial issue. I could make the survey in 2029 and 2014 and 2009. Price rise will always be top of the mind. The voter always feels that he or she is paying more at that particular moment. Uh, for unemployment, yes, I would say if you ask this question any time in the, any time, whether there are elections, no elections, 2019, 2019 or 2004, uh, most of the time a very large number of people are going to say unemployment is high, but that's not the, the relationship with the price rise. If prices are under control, I think the proportion of people saying price rise should be much less compared to what we see at the moment. Why we see 71% people saying prices are high? Because they are actually feeling the pinch on the ground. So, yes, some people would definitely say all the time prices are high, mm -hmm. they are feeling the pinch of the price rise. But at this moment, I think it is exceptionally higher. And this is not the only survey where we have got 71% people saying prices are higher. We have looked at, as I said earlier also, mm -hmm. even during Rajni. the state assembly election, a very large number of people, because I think this is the, this is the situation going on for the last three, four years. Okay, but the fact May is, yeah, 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 Sanju Varma, you can certainly come in because I know you will throw the number that please look at inflation average uh, in the uh, uh, Modi years versus UPA years. And you have every reason to claim that the Modi uh, years have seen inflation on an average lower, but this is perception. Your number of 7% that you will throw at me does not reflect if I'm a woman in some small village in Karnataka or in Manipur or in Uttar Pradesh who's feeling the pinch. And that's the reason why every political party is saying that we will give you LPG at 500 rupees because you've realized that those prices were hurting. Why not acknowledge that there is hurt? Please go on. Do you acknowledge there is distress or not? Rajdeep, I will say what I need to say. Please do. I think I think I'm a super efficient debater. So, you know, I don't need to be told by any anchor. Even a seasoned anchor like Rajdeep with 35 years of experience cannot tell Sanju Verma what she should say. Okay, please say what you want. Please debate. go ahead. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Very humbly. Now, let's be very clear about one thing. You know, what your, uh, you know, colleague... Uh, Sanjay Kumar should be asking, let's just hypothetically keep aside inflation and unemployment. There will always be, uh, you know, two very important uh, things in the entire equation, in the entire narrative. Why is it that BJP keeps winning? I remember this gentleman from the Congress, with no offense to him, he's a learned person. Talk to Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh election with us. Is it BJP staff away? Madhya Pradesh knows that they are coming to power. Surely their Yojana is a big flop. This man said, oh, lawlessness and Ashok Gehlot is only a figment of BJP's imagination. Uh, you know, Sakur Chandra Si and Ashok Gehlot, Ashok Gehlot was routed. Then they said, oh, Bhupesh Bagel, she's done phenomenal work for titles. In Chhattisgarh, Bhupesh Bagel, Dovakar Sarahe. I can also remember, Chhattisgarh Sardis is saying, that Bhupesh Bagel reminds me of someone like Amol Palikar. People who do so much, they deliver the rates. Unfortunately, Bhupesh Bagel, uh, you know, proved to be a damn squid. No, why? You know, it is important to look beyond inflation and unemployment very quickly. I hope, I wish next time, Mr. Sanjay Kumar, who I have tremendous respect for, will ask the women, the poor, the farmers, the marginalized, uh, madam, 
52 crore jandhan bank accounts have been opened of which 72% belong to women are you happy answer aayega yes jaiye amethi ke chote gaon mein aur boliye 12 crore toilets bane hain and many toilets have been built in amethi alone in the last 5 years kya aap khush hain the answer from a young girl will be ji ha main behad khush hu got my father in a remote village in rajasthan ask him bharatpur you know which is very famous for growing bajra puche what has changed under narendra modi he will tell you bhai pehle to ek paisa nahi milta tha the bank mein har saal seedhe seedhe chhod ko khate ke andar hai three lakh crore has been given to more than 10 crore farmers by the pm kisan sita manji a poor dalit woman who the modi met and he had chai with her she said kai saalon ke baad chule ke samne mujhe apna संजय कुमार यू वॉन्ट गिव अक रिस्पॉन्स टू दैट सिंस इट्स योर सर्वे अगेन द फिगर्स दैट संजय Are being yeah, cited no. here by Sanju Verma. Reflect, he says. Other, she says. Other issues. Maybe the quality of roads. Maybe the fact that under Ujwala, at least initially, I got a gas cylinder Absolutely at subsidized right. rates. Absolutely, Rajdeep. No disagreement to what Sanju Verma was referring to. If you talk about the general levels of governance, you talk about. drinking water electricity supply road electricity etc mm -hmm. uh, there is a huge endorsement for the work done by the bjp government during last 5 10 years mm -hmm. there is no doubt about that but that doesn't mean endorsement on the work on some parameters does not mean that people are not feeling the pinch of unemployment mm -hmm. because you get water at home you have electricity at home but that does not mean that even getting a job becomes easier or prices of onions and vegetables are not high mm -hmm. so what sanju verma has said is right in the survey we get the sense mm -hmm. that general governance of uh, general level of governance is being appreciated by a very large number of people okay so you are distinguishing between general level of governance which is being appreciated and concerns over price rise and an un unemployment which are just as genuine unfortunately Absolutely. politicians tend to cher cherry pick what suits them which is perhaps why they are politicians let me turn to the next question then is corruption less or more now what is the view on corruption as per the survey pre poll 2024 55% said corruption has increased in the past 5 years pre poll 2019 it was 40% so 55% are saying corruption has increased versus 40% 5 years ago stayed the same 19% now versus 14% then decrease 19% now versus 37% then 37% then said corruption had decreased it's almost come down by half so clearly even on corruption rajat sethi there's a sense that unlike there isn't a sense of again positive energy ki yaar bhrashtachar khatam ho gaya i just wonder whether political party should acknowledge maybe sanju verma and uh, uh, adil singh bopar i should acknowledge these are real concerns average person says maybe he still has to pay hafta see uh, you know i largely agree that you know uh, corruption at a retail level is still there we here i mean all our family members who are there in B uh, bangalore they complain that every small uh, councilor level person also uh, for every registry every property registry every connection uh, water connection electricity connection all of those basic uh, retail level grassroots level government services there is mm -hmm. corruption mm -hmm. but what has significantly changed is policy level corruption which became symbolic of uh, the doom story of upa we don't see any policy level corruption uh, which plagued our nation i think this these two things if you differentiate uh, between this question mm -hmm. you will see electorate clearly saying that the central government has been run largely by the books and sort of meets the expectations on the um, on the on the policy uh, corruption barometer uh, adil singh boparai you want to respond to that uh you know, even whether it's on governance or on corruption whether it will actually touch the modi government in some way and actually undermine confidence in the government that's not clear mr boparai 
Mr. Sardesai, I find the previous gentleman's response to be amusing. The BJP government at the centre is running, or till recently was running, the largest extortion scheme of the world, called the Electoral Bond Scheme, which has been struck down by the Supreme Court. Now, let me tell your viewers how this extortion scheme worked. You had investigating agencies such as the IT, the ED and the CBI raiding individuals. Once raids and notices were sent, you had these individuals joining the BJP, aligning with the BJP or heavily donating to the BJP. Once this exercise was completed, you either had these agencies putting these cases into the cold storage or you had this beautiful scenario where these individuals joined or allied with the BJP. Now, if my friend is to be believed, Ajit Pawar, Ashok Chavan, and Praful Patel are paragons of integrity. Does Ms. Uh, Sanju Verma and the previous speaker now hold that opinion? The fact of the matter is, when the Congress Party comes to power and the India Alliance comes to power, we will hold a full-fledged investigation into the essence of this racket which was run by the Bharatiya Janata Party with the aid of enforcement agencies. Please do not undermine the, the importance of this electoral bond scam. This is arguably legalized plunder which was authorized by the ruling dispensation. No, 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 and I minute. assure you on behalf of the Congress party, you... it is our commitment to the voters of this country that we will go to the bottom of this scam. Can I, can I though, can I though, when I look at those numbers, Sanju Verma point out that the poor are feeling the pinch of corruption even more. So while we may talk about corruption of politicians, whether ED, IT, this survey is looking at, am I as an individual? Affected when I have to go to registry, when I have to file a complaint with the police, when I need a, a, a land certificate, I have to pay hafta. That's the fear. So it's the poor. So do you acknowledge right through this program, you're not willing to acknowledge that anything's gone wrong. You're not willing to acknowledge on unemployment price rise. Would you acknowledge that petty corruption still remains an issue or not? Rajdeep, now I saw that you did not interrupt the Congress spokesperson even once. I don't I, know what I have a problem with. Now, please listen, Rajdeep. Do not get agitated. No, no, no. Please don't. Please don't point a yes. finger at me. You keep saying, yes. don't heckle me. You end up heckling please, me. Please Why are you heckling me? Thank I'm you. being nice to you. Thank you. Yes. You know, all this gentleman from the Congress, you know, I'm appalled. He says that you know, Modi government is running the biggest extortion scheme. Hi, sir. Congress has received money in excess of 1950 to cross through electoral bonds, big mega Beat Santiago Martin's future, beat Vedan, uh, you know, beat quick supply solution, private limited, and a whole host of companies. This is the same company whose top two leaders, Sonia Gandhi, out on bail in National Herald Scam, Rahul Gandhi, out on bail in National Herald Scam, Pim Chitakuram, out on bail in INX Media Scam. Construction, JP Infra, Kingfisher Airlines, you name it. The 10 biggest things happened under the long and incompetent nose of Manmohan Singh and Sonia Gandhi's kitchen cabinet. We have recouped. Ma'am, no, I am, I am only finish. going by what, how Which people see it. I talked Can about... I no, no, no. Because I, you see, y'all are not... I said people on the ground still seem to suggest that corruption affects That's their daily lives. Now, the hafta culture still exists. These are people living in villages. They are not worried about what happens in Delhi. People living in villages, 55% say corruption has increased. I'm finishing my point. Thank you, please, do. please do. Please do. I have a problem with one thing. I'm going to be honest with you. I always say that you're not a career investment banker. Politics is new to me. If you ask me, I will say yes. And this is a fact. Yeah, Amit Shah has said some conclaves. Narendra Modi even said this to your boss, Arun Puri. Has cases against Ajit Pawar been suspended? No. Has case has the case against Janardhan Reddy been suspended? No. Has the case against Chagan Gujbal been suspended? No. Has the case against you know uh, people like Yashwan Jadhav been suspended? No. But मुझे problem तब है जब राजदीप सारदे साई इतने प्रख्यात और reputed anchor हैं. He will talk about Ajit Pawar. He will talk about Janardhan Reddy. He will talk about Narayan Rani. He will talk about Subhendra Adhikari. He will talk about Yashwan Jadhav. 
But the same Rajiv Sardesai will never talk about Sanjay Rao, who's involved in the Patra Chol scam. The same Rajiv Sardesai will not ask even once to the Congress spokesperson how they pay 50 lakh rupees. Rajiv, so, yeah, Sar Rajiv Sardesai is not interested in the water boundary of politicians. Rajiv Sardesai here is asking on behalf of the citizens of the country based on a survey we have done. Please put the voices down. Because the truth of the matter, ma'am, is I am trying to get answers based on the survey. The survey is saying 55% are saying corruption has increased. This is corruption that affects them presumably in their daily lives as Sanjay Kumar points. Pointed out. This is not necessarily about what is happening at the top. This is what happens. I'm, am I correct, Sanjay Kumar ji? This is how people perceive corruption that affects them in their daily lives. Absolutely, Rajdeep, you have already explained. Uh, again, stressing the point, this is perception. It's in our day-to-day -day life. When you go to the passport office, when you go to the, you know, like uh, for a police station, it's not, the, the perception doesn't say that the corruption has increased at the top. It's, there's no indication of that. It's about your day-to-day -day experience. Okay. What do you do when you go to any government office to get your work done? So that's what is the survey is telling us about. That in a day-to-day -day life, people don't see much difference. A very large number of people think corruption has gone up. Well, I, what I will say though is that those offices that have got digitized, certainly there's a sense that things have got better. But I think when you go right down to the bottom of the pyramid, people still tend to struggle, particularly when government servants have discretionary powers. That's another debate. My final question in the survey, who has benefited most from growth? Only for the rich, pre-poll 2024, 32% said uh, uh, only for the rich. Post-poll 2019 was 24%, post-poll 2014 was 43%. Has development taken place for all people? 48% was the number. No development at all, 15%. So 32% said pre-poll 2024, development only for the rich. For all people, 48%. No development at all, 15%. So most of them acknowledge development has taken place, but at least one in every three say it's only for the rich, but one in every two say it is for all people. The final question, therefore, linked to that was, have Ache Din arrived? To a great extent, to a great extent, said 16%. To some extent, said 33%. Not much, said 18%. Not at all, said 22%. So, add 18 and 22, that's 40% are saying, Achedin, not much or not at all. Great extent and some extent, add the two, is 39%. So, it's a divided view. About 40% feel, to some extent, at least, Achedin have arrived. Not much or not at all is also 40%. And that, Rajat Sethi, perhaps sums up the mood. That on these questions, there is a... You know, it's not as if there is euphoria in the country at the moment, but there is an also despondency. Well, that's a very coloured perception, Rajdeep. I mean, after a 10-year uh, incumbent government, and you uh, see that a 60%, almost 50-60% electorate says that uh, the governance uh, and the development they can visibly feel and see, that is a big, big thumbs up. I mean, if, if that is the, uh, you know, the no, graph... 40, no, no, one minute. 48% say for all people. Yeah, th that's that's what I'm saying. That's a big number. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would I would interpret it as a very, very big thumbs up to the, uh, to the national government. Because, see, uh, for a fairly long time, uh, the opposition always questioned the, the Modi government that they bring up uh, uh, Hindutva issues and they push, push aside developmental issues. I think this election will be an eye-opener. This election is an exclusively developmental-oriented election and the electorate is, is, is going to judge that. And a, a fairly good number say mm -hmm. that the development and the vikas, the, the core element of uh, Modi's offering, is visible to them. You, uh, you go uh, Sanjay to Kumar, is that how you see it? <laughs> Rajat Sethi is saying this is a thumbs up. Is that how you see it? Quality of life, 48% are saying quality of life has got better. 14% said stay same, worse 15%, uh, 35%. So at least half the voters are saying quality of life has got better. Is that a positive or thumbs up? Is there no anti-incumbency? Oh, thumbs up would be a strong word from my point of view. But yes, I don't see a strong anti-incumbency mood. Or strong would be again too strong a word to use. I don't see a mood of anti-incumbency because overall, as I mentioned earlier also, that there are issues on which people are positive. And mm -hmm. these are also the day-to-day -day issues of people's life about Bijli, Sadak, Pani, etc.
-hmm. So people feel happy about that because they think that these have come to their doorstep, these are available to them easily. But when it comes to unemployment and price rise, and we have been discussing this, Rajdeep, that this is an issue which is going on for a very long time. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes mm -hmm. it comes down. This is a moment when I see that anxieties of the people about price rise and unemployment has gone up a little bit compared to the past. Mm -hmm. But on the whole, I don't see a sign of anti-incumbency against this government. Okay, so we've got one minute to go. Adil Singh Bopra, you just heard from Professor Kumar. He says he doesn't see anti-incumbency. There's no anger. There may be despondency or a sense of uh, feeling a little dissatisfied, but no anger. There's, there may be dissatisfaction in some quarters, but no anger seems to be the broad, in a way, picture emerging. Your response? Mr. Satisai, I would, I would like to pick up uh, the fourth question of your survey, which was put to the voters, about whether the rich have grown richer or whether the development has been all-pervasive. I think the answer to that question has to be objective. Today, and this is, this is shown of any personal opinion, this is hard data talking, two-thirds of India's wealth is owned by about 1% of India. What does that show? That shows a very, very wide income inequality levels. So that means that the rich are getting richer and the poor or the middle class is either stagnant or they're going poor. But they're so not angry. Question, but they're not angry. They're not, the poor may not have got Achyadin, but they're not angry. They don't, doesn't seem to be anger. You will see the anger. You will see the anger at the hustings. You will okay. see the anger at the hustings because this is a government which, which has used all methods to suppress genuine dissemination of information and people's voices. So let's leave that for the day okay. when, when the votes are cast I, and the results are declared. I, okay. But finally, on the issue of corruption, mm -hmm. this government has been stonewalling investigations and has been stonewalling answers to legitimate questions. I again reiterate, the electoral bond scheme is an extortion scam. It is a yes. washing machine yes. scam I where the enforcement agency is Adil, if you go on, if you go on, Sanju Verma, Sanju when these leaders or individuals are Okay, you made your point. 30 seconds, Sanju Verma. Ma'am, just a minute. Your 30 seconds start now. This poll shows there is no major anti-incumbency, but there are areas of dissatisfaction. Will you acknowledge them at the end of this show or not? Ya sab sanga changa si. Everything is nice. Everything is fine. Rajneet. I need 45 seconds because the, uh, I'm, I'm counting. I'm counting. Please, Thank you. Thank you. Pradhan Mr. Narendra Modi ne bhi bakhoo bhi kaha tha in 2023. Tumhare paav ke niche zameen nahi hai. Aur saare Congressio jo Rajdeep Sabde se ka bahut popular show dekh rahe ho, dhyan se suniye. Tumhare paav ke niche zameen nahi hai. Lekin kamal to ye hai. Tumhe yakin nahi hai. Lekin kamal to ye hai. Tumhe yakin nahi hai. The Congress refuses to introspect. Elections are not won in TV studios or on Twitter. Elections are won on the ground, but last, they will say, what, what is more than winning? Please, I think I still have 30 seconds left. The world's biggest financial inclusion scheme, Jandhan Yojana, 52 crore bank account, 72% belonging to Dalit and marginalized women. The world's largest self-employment scheme, Mudra Yojana, with more than 43 crore loan application process, of which 30 crore belong to women. The world's largest health insurance scheme, bigger than Obama Care, Ayushman Bharat, more than 26 crore Ayushman cards issued. Do you know something? That today there are more than 10,000 Jan Aushadi Kendras. Surprise, Rajdi, when I was doing homework. Ma'am, I, I, I gave you time. You're, you're saying, please look at the government's inclusive, positive agenda. Look at the schemes. And you believe that's the reason why this survey should be looked at more from the perspective of the schemes of the government that you claim have influenced lives. But as I said, the survey is also pointing out growing disquiet over unemployment in particular, but also to an extent on price rise and maybe the benefits of development being cornered by the rich in this country. We leave it there. I appreciate uh, all of you joining us on the political rumble. We will continue to rumble along in this election season. Thanks for watching. Stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind. Namaskar.